Hello everyone and welcome to the kitchen. We're gonna look at a really special cookbook. Uh, I'm excited to try this one because it's kind of one of those oldie but goodie vegetarian books. Um, really getting into like the old school hippie movement kind of vegetarianism. And that cookbook is Horn of the Moon by Jenny Callen. I hope I'm saying that name right. Now, this cookbook is actually based on a restaurant of the same name that Jenny opened in Montpelier, Vermont in 1977. Now, that restaurant could only seat 13 people when it first opened. And within a year, it became so popular that she had to move into a larger space. Now, the restaurant became so iconic that there's been a lot of articles written about it throughout the decades, and I will link some of those articles in the description box below if you want to do some further reading on what sounds like was a really cool restaurant to go to. Now, Jenny actually ended up selling that restaurant in 1990, and sadly, that restaurant had to close down in the year 2000. So sadly, you can no longer eat at that restaurant, but good thing for us, Jenny wrote a cookbook in 1987 that features a lot of the recipes that she served in that restaurant. So that's what we're gonna look at. I'm so excited. I picked, I think, what's gonna be a really, really neat vegetarian uh, recipe. So we're gonna go ahead and get started because there's a lot of moving parts to this recipe. So let's hurry up and get over there where we need to start chopping a lot of vegetables. And I wasn't kidding when I said there's a lot of moving parts to this recipe. We do have a lot of chopping to do um, and we have some frying to do because we're going to make Jenny's famous fried tofu that uh, a lot of people really remember from that restaurant. And I did cheat a hair. So you can see here that she cooks her beans um, from dry beans. I'm gonna shave off just a little bit of time in prep work. Um, I had these already on hand, so I decided to let bush beans do some of the heavy lifting for me. So we're gonna go ahead, get these warmed up and ready, and yep, let's, uh, let's just get out the chopping board and the knife. All right, everything is washed and ready to be chopped. In the meantime, I put the beans in a pot to warm up, um, but we're gonna add some other ingredients to this after we mash them up. So we're gonna let that simmer for a little bit. But first of all, we're going to need our garlic cloves that's gonna go into the beans. And let me show you real quick what recipe we're going to actually do. I picked these moon burritos for a couple different reasons. One, I love the name. Um, it fits in great with the restaurant, of course. And it also featured um, the fried tofu that um, was really famous at the restaurant. And they just looked really good. That could, you know, kind of look like an intimidating amount of uh, ingredients, but really I think it's fairly simple and straightforward. So I think it's a really good thing that you could put on your table for dinner um, relatively easily. I don't know if I would do this uh, right after I got home from a long day of work, but it's certainly something that if you've got a little time in the kitchen, I think this is gonna be worth it. And we also need to get this tofu going. So let's go ahead and cut that out and cut that into our squares for frying. All right, I'm gonna try to squeeze out some of this excess water before we cut up our tofu. I think it just makes the frying process a little bit easier. Now, I've had good and bad luck with frying tofu. So I guess we're just gonna have to see which way the winds are blowing today to see if this is gonna turn out um, as good as I'm hoping it will. Now, according to the cookbook and several articles that I read, Ginny was famous for cooking the tofu in sunflower oil. 
but I went to several different stores in my area and could not find it anywhere. So I finally just settled on avocado oil as a substitute. And I believe it may be because in recent years, sunflower oil has actually fallen out of um, favor uh, to fry in. A lot of you know um, health experts are kind of calling into question um, how healthy it actually is. So we're gonna go with avocado oil. Um, it's still gonna serve the same purpose, and then we'll add our tamari once everything is fried up. I'm gonna go ahead and give these beans a quick mash. Then we've got a few ingredients we're gonna add to them to make them taste really good. All right, this is starting to look really good. And this is actually one of the things that drew me to this recipe because anytime you've got tomatoes, beans, and garlic, that has got to be a great recipe. We've got our little bit of cayenne. And then of course, in goes our tomatoes. I'm going to just kind of stir this together. Um, I'm just not getting another spoon to dirty. Um, that's why I'm using this. But I'm gonna let this go ahead and just stay on the stove and simmer together and kind of meld those flavors. These are already smelling great. Um, so as a base to burritos, I think this is gonna be the key that makes this recipe really, really good. And now we've got a lot of chopping to do. So let's go ahead and get this finished while everything is kind of simmering on the stove and that tofu um, is not done yet. So we've got some time. One thing I thought that was really cool about this particular restaurant, according to every article I have read about it, it really became the place to eat in Montpelier. Uh, lots of people wanted to go there, even if they weren't vegetarian or vegan, um, just because the atmosphere and the food was so good. One thing I thought was kind of funny though, uh, one of the articles mentioned that Jenny really was against air conditioning in the building. So any of you that's ever worked in a restaurant, you know just how miserably hot it gets in the kitchen. And so they finally just had to come up with a compromise um, because it was just getting too hot uh, to work in that kind of conditions. And I'm not really sure what the compromise was, um, but apparently it did help because a lot of the employees uh, were happy with it. Now, lack of air conditioning certainly didn't keep people away um, from eating there because from what I gathered, it was one of those places where the wait staff knew your name. Sometimes uh, if you were a regular, they would have your order on the grill as soon as they saw you come through the door. And the restaurant really became one of those early pioneers of local eating. So Jenny would get together with farmers uh, and try to buy all of her produce locally. She said that really hurt them in the winter, um, you know, when produce prices obviously goes up. And she said there was a lot of times where she would eat really good food, um, but bring home no money. Then in the spring and summer, of course, that would kind of equal out as you got a lot more cheaper and abundant produce. But I like the fact that she committed to it, um, even in the toughest months. Now, she does have another cookbook that she published a few years, you know, after this one uh, called Beyond the Moon. And if this recipe is really good, I'll probably be looking for Beyond the Moon also. Now, I really enjoy recipes like this um, and cookbooks like this. I really like that whole era of that nostalgic hippie kind of movement, kind of the health food and health food recipes that I remember when growing up in the 1980s when you would go into a health food store and there was just a particular feel, smell, and look to it very organic, very fresh. And sometimes now, every once in a while, you can find a really good health food store that still has that whole hippie and nostalgic vibe to it. 
And now I just have this one pepper left. I chose a jalapeno just because I'm a little bit of a coward when it comes to really hot stuff. But after I get this chopped up, we'll check on our tofu. Probably need to turn it by now and then get all the rest of our stuff going. And I almost forgot you're gonna need three cloves of garlic to saute with those vegetables. So I went ahead and chopped that up too. Now beans are looking good still and this tofu is ready to flip. So I'm gonna use my fish um, spatula. I think that might be a little easier and try to very carefully flip these over. Oh, that looks really good. So the tofu fates must be with us today. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish flipping all the rest of this. We still need to fry them on all sides. So we've got a little bit to go yet. And then we'll be ready to saute the vegetables and roll these up. Okay, we are ready for our next step. We're gonna go ahead and saute our onions, garlic, and carrots. And I almost forgot the broccoli. So that was two items <laughs> that I almost left out of this recipe, um, which, you know, it goes to show you it pays to check that recipe over and over, um, you know, as you're cooking, just so you know you're getting everything. So we're just gonna let this all saute together before we add the rest of the ingredients. And then I believe this tofu is almost done. I've been turning some of them on their sides so we get everything nice and crispy and brown. So I'm gonna continue to do that, like flip a couple more of these, but for the most part, this is done. Okay, this looks done to me. I'm really happy with how it turned out. We've got one more little step before we pull it off the pan, and that is to put about a teaspoon of tamari in here. We're gonna let this cook for another minute, then we're going to take this off the heat. All right, and we are ready for the next step. We're gonna go ahead and add our zucchini. We had a little straggler there. We're going to add the bell pepper. We've got our broccoli. And we've got that jalapeno. Look how beautiful everything looks in there. Ah, uh, and the smell is wonderful. There is nothing better than onions and garlic. Ah, uh, then you add all this color to it and it makes it 10 times better. So our vegetables are done. Let's go ahead and add our salt. And you know what? Since I only have a little bit left in there, I'm gonna go ahead and add the whole thing. I think that'll be about two teaspoons. So we're gonna give this a really good stir. I'm gonna let this get really nice and incorporated in there. And then we're ready to roll our burritos. <laughs> We are finally ready to do this. We've got our tortilla, we've got our beans, our veggie mix, we've got our cheeses. Now, of course, I'm using vegan. This is a mix of vegan cheddar and then the vegan Mexican blend. And then we've got our fried tofu. So let's start rolling these up. It's not too bad. It kind of looks like it, but there is a rhyme and a reason to it. Now, with your tortilla, you're gonna start with your bean mixture. You've got your gorgeous, colorful veggies that go next. She said to add a little bit of tofu. We're topping it with our cheese. And now comes the hard part because I probably overstuffed this. Now we have to roll it up. Okay, not too shabby. I'm just gonna call that good and pop it in my casserole. I just wanted you to see how beautiful that looks before the cheese kind of obscures everything. And the smell is so good. I wish you could smell it. Your mouth would be watering so much right now. 
and I managed to cram six burritos in there. So <laughs> let's go ahead and add our salsa. This, I promise, is the last step you have to do <laughs> before they go into the oven. Now, Jenny, of course, made her own salsa, um, but I already had this in the refrigerator. Um, I had bought this previously before I knew I was going to be making these, and I really didn't want to waste it. So I'm just going to use this. Um, but, you know, if you want to make your own salsa, then go ahead. I bet that would make it even better. So let's do a quick look through of Horn of the Moon cookbook so you can see if this is something you want to add to your collection. So first off, we start out with an introduction, um, which, you know, just goes into why she opened the restaurant, how she became a vegetarian. That was nice to uh, read. And we start off with breakfast, and I think that's really nice because, you know, oddly enough, not every cookbook does this, and that's something that's kind of important. I'm always looking for really good um, breakfast recipes, so I really enjoyed the fact that she added this in. We have lots of good-looking bread recipes. And a lot of these soups look really good too. Now, bear in mind, this is not a vegan cookbook. This is strictly vegetarian. Um, so that's why you're going to be seeing a lot of dairy products um, and eggs. But, you know, as for the dairy products, we know you can substitute those, you know, fairly easily. So if you wanted to make a lot of these vegan, I'm sure you would have no problem doing that. We've got lots of really good looking salads in here. And I like the fact that she adds in um, some homemade dressings, you know, that she would make in the restaurant. I think that's really cool. And I'm sure, you know, they look really tasty. I'm sure they're really good. We have simple meals, which is good, um, especially for people uh, in a hurry um, that have a lot to do, but still want, you know, something to make at home um, that's, you know, relatively tasty and easy to make. So I like the fact that she included this. I think this is really cool too. Just sandwich fixings and fillings. That's a good idea to just kind of go through and, you know, get some ideas on what you would like to uh, make. So she gives you like this little equation and then you come over here and you just pick and choose what you would like in that equation. I think that's a really cool idea. We've got lots of burgers, and a lot of them look really good. Lentil burgers, mushroom barley would be really good, marinated tempeh. I mean, all of these are burgers that I would definitely try. And I thought this was really cool. She's got a pizza section. So, you know, if you've got a basic pizza dough, you know, here's a bunch of toppings, um, different types of pizzas that you can use. I think that's really neat. And we may actually come back to one of these. This miso tofu pizza actually sounds pretty intriguing. And we've got pies. I love how she's keeping with the moon theme. Uh, we've got a Luna pie here. So these are your savory pies um, that would be really good for dinner. Oh, tofu mushroom pie. You can tell I really love mushrooms. <laughs> Here's a Mexican section. That's where we got our moon burritos from. And we've even got crepes. So this would be something really fun to try. Um, you've got, you know, your basic crepe recipe. And then you've got all the fillings that you could um, put in that crepe. We've got lots of desserts, tons of, oh, these look really good. Lots of fruit pies, apple and pumpkin. We've got Greek walnut pie. That sounds really good. And then moon cookies. So we're keeping with the theme here. These both actually look really good. I'm really intrigued by the moon cookies. So overall, I'm extremely impressed with this cookbook. Um, I'm really intrigued by quite a few of these recipes. Really glad I picked this up because there's tons of things in here that just look so good and that you can't wait to eat. And I found this for only $5 at a used bookstore. So I am completely happy with that purchase. So there's your look through. Hope that kind of gives you an idea 
idea as to whether or not you would want to um, fit this into your collection and your life to cook from. And now let's go ahead and get back to those burritos. These should be done. Let's go ahead and check. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, my gosh. And just so you know, uh, you know, my husband, Mitch, works from home. And when he came out of his office, even he was blown away by how good the house smelled because of all this cooking. So I think that's going to be a good sign that these are going to taste really great. From the smell of these... I'm expecting a five-star taste. <laughs> they, they do smell really good. So I smelled them before I got to work. Oh, let's go ahead and just dig in. Ready? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. My mouth is watering so hard right now because of all the goodness that is stuffed into this burrito. <laughs> it is like, and it, it does have like a wide mm. range of well blended flavors. Mm hmm. And the tofu, oh, the tofu is perfect in this with that little splash of tamari. I can see why she was famous for that. Um, she put it in a lot of different recipes at that restaurant, and it really quickly became a favorite. I can see why this, she said, did go on to become a bestseller hmm. in the restaurant when she switched the name from, like, broccoli tofu cheese burritos <laughs> to moon burritos, and then suddenly everyone's <laughs> buying them. <laughs> marketing, it's all about... It's, yeah. it's just marketing, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that this is a restaurant level yeah. quality of taste. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would order this if the Horn of the Moon was still in business. I'm really glad that I have the recipe, and now you do too, um, so that this recipe wasn't lost to history when that restaurant shut down. I just don't even know what I, <laughs> it's just the levels of flavor yeah. that just keep on giving yeah but they're like i said they're really well blended together too it's yes. not like it's not like you can you, i can barely pick out a lot of the mm. different flavors you know what i mean like mm -hmm. individually but as a whole it's still got a lot of really good flavor in it mm. these are great yeah. oh my gosh these are so good to me, that means that this cookbook is a resounding pick it up if you see it. Yeah. So there you go. A really special look at a special cookbook. And I hope you try this. I promise you, you are going to love it. So thanks for watching this video. And I hope you have a really great rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, Here's two more videos you might enjoy, and make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.